Good morning, MCC. How's everyone this morning? Hope you guys had a good night's sleep and uh, hope you are excited about today. And I just want to welcome everybody. As you all know, we're now in uh, modified lockdown level four. So we've been banned from getting together in house churches. And um, who knows that I think the, the church is, is um, on the brink of going underground. And I know that sounds like a very radical statement, but um, I mean, who would have thought that a year later we'd be back down at level four? So, you know, in one way it's it's sad, and but in another way it's exciting because I believe that um, every time a door is closed, that God opens one for us. So, so even though we're not gathered together in our house churches this morning, I want to welcome each one of you, and I want to bless you in the name of our our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning. I'm going to encourage you, you can see from our, from our heading there, that we're just going to have an awesome time in the presence of God. And I'm just going to, I'm going to share some stuff with you that I think is important for us, um, not only from, from a, a leadership point of view, but also from, from the kingdom of God point of view. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, so we're going to take up an offering now. And um, so because of the situation, um, I'm going to do the offering this morning. Hey guys, so we're going to take up an offering now. And um, because obviously we're not in, in house church anymore, so what we're going to do is um, you'll just see the, um, the zapper come up on the screen. Uh, for, the, for those of you who don't have it, um, you know, you can just arrange with uh, your soul shepherds and that sort of thing that, um, that, you, can, that you can give your offering. Uh, we're not going to let these, uh, what, what we're going to call these little speed bumps, amen, these little speed bumps that we have with uh, things like lockdown and we're not allowed to get together. So guys, this morning, um, we take up an offering and um, I don't want to give you a teaching this morning. I just want to talk to you about, um, about the kingdom because, you know, I think most of us don't understand, um, you know, kingdom principles because we grew up in democracies and we grew up where, um, you know, where, where there's voting and, you know, where the majority sort of decides what, what's going to happen. And in a kingdom, it's different. You see, in a kingdom, there's a king, and in a, in, 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 in a kingdom, when there's a king, the king has sovereign rule, which means that he, he has the right to do anything he wants to. And that's exactly what happens with our God. That's exactly what, I mean, God is, you know, um, omnipotently powerful, and he's omniscient, meaning that he knows everything. So he is king of all. So when we, when we know that we are in a kingdom it works a little bit differently which means that everything belongs to that king because when there's a kingdom it means that everything belongs to the kingdom so everything that we own belongs to that king so when we come and we give of what we of what we what we make or what we grow or any business or any um you know any trade that we do um any 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 way that we that we actually you know get finances the first thing that we will do if we live in in a kingdom is that we will honor the king amen so how do we honor the king and that's pretty simple if we read from the bible the bible talks about about tithing the bible talks about giving our first tenth or, or the first part of our income and why is that so important well we know god gave his son he gave his most important thing for us. And so the only decision that you need to make about whether or not you're going to give is first and foremost, is the king of this kingdom a good king? Is this king a king that cares for you? Does this king care about your welfare? Does he care about whether or not um, you have enough? In other words, or he, is he a wicked king that just keeps on increasing taxes? You see, in the kingdom of God, there's, there's no taxation. There's no law of taxation. Now, the New Testament, uh, um, Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says that we should be cheerful givers. That, that God doesn't want to receive anything from us out of obligation. So, so this morning I want, I want to talk to you as, as subjects of a king. And subjects of a king in a kingdom amen so when we give this morning we we must we must give from the heart and decide has this king been so good to me has this king 
offered up, is this king looking after me? And if I can answer that question and say, yes, he has, then I'm going to come and bring my goodwill offering or I'm going to bring my first tenth. Amen. Amen. So guys, let's pray about, let's pray about that. Let's, uh, let, let's let the Lord come and bless our finances this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father God, so we thank you that we are in a kingdom and we have an eternal king. And we live in an eternal kingdom, even though, Lord, um, in this body, we are going to die one day. But we've already, those of us who are born from above, that are born again, will enter. We've already entered into that eternal life. And that eternal life is in, in Father God's Son, in our brother, in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I pray a blessing, um, not only over, over uh, my brothers and my sisters and my fellow subjects in the kingdom of God. I don't just pray a blessing of their of their finances i pray that you would increase i uh, that you that you would give them increase so that um that you would be able to see by the way that the, that we open our hearts not only to you our king that we give what is actually yours and what belongs to you but to those around us i bless you for every blessing and i bless you today lord for every financial breakthrough in the kingdom of god lord when the whole world is unsure we are sure why? Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, Lord, I just bless, Lord, and I thank you for every financial miracle. I thank you that you supply all our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
turn me around And you put my feet on solid ground Hallelujah Hallelujah oh, You break the chains You break the chains of sin and shame And you move me to your holy place Hallelujah Oh Jesus Hallelujah You pick me up You pick me up And you turn me around And you put my feet on solid Repartara babarta tras sabrama mara, que a burbu tuli le se breve minda tu lucunore, herbe verbe petremempa sobro bonjona, sacura babarte verbele, hemunda bana, masciere me parto rucu tu nuri me piarvale, da voce mari ba portonde, artuli ca uruburundi, ma so portonde, ma martarali le che tre, bibaro tu lucuru de se porton la buba chan de menta. Mio monte, sa tu le lecchia, tu posci per pena, babur botone, a montaba, a burte belle vetila. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I thank you, Lord, right now for your word. Now, since we are God's co workers, we beg you not to take God's marvelous grace for granted, but allowing it, allowing it to have no effect on your lives. 
Listen to what I said. I said, now, since we are God's co-workers, we beg you not to take God's marvelous grace for granted, allowing it to have no effect in your lives. For he says, I have listened to you all the time of my favor, and the day when you needed salvation, I came to your aid. So can't you see? Now is the time. Now is the time to respond to his favor. Now is the day of salvation. We will not place opti obstacles in anyone's way that hinder them from coming to salvation so that our ministry will not be discredited. Yet, as God's servants, we prove ourselves authentic in every way. For example, we have great endurance in hardships and in persecutions. And we don't lose courage in a time of stress or calamity. We've been beaten many times, imprisoned, and found ourselves in the midst of riots. We've endured many troubles, had sleepless nights and gone hungry. And we have proved ourselves by our lifestyle of purity, by our spiritual insights, by our patience, and by showing kindness by the spirit of holiness, and by our uncritical love for you. We commend ourselves to you by our truthful teachings, by the power of God working through us, and with the mighty weapons of righteousness, a sword in one hand and a shield in the other. Amid dishonor and honor, slander or praise, and even when we are treated as deceivers and impostors, we remain steadfast and true. We are unknown nobodies whom everybody knows. We are frequently at death's door, yet here we are, still alive. We've been severely punished, yet not executed. We may suffer, yet in every season we are always found rejoicing. We may be poor, yet we bestow great riches on many. And we seem to have nothing, yet in reality we possess everything. We seem to have nothing, yet in reality we possess all things. My friends in MCC, I'm paraphrasing, it's Corinth, but for us, my friends at MCC, or wherever you are, our hearts are wide open to you and we speak freely, holding nothing back from you. If there is a block in our relationship, it's not with us. For we carry you in our hearts with great love, yet you still withhold your affections from us. So I speak to you as to our children. Make room in your hearts as we have done for you. And don't continue to team up with unbelievers in mismatched alliances. For what partnership is there between righteousness and rebellion? Who could mingle light with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What friendship does God's temple have with demons? We are the temple of the living God. And just as God said, I will make my home in them, walk among them, I will be their God, and they will be my people. For this reason, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch nothing that is unclean, and I will embrace you, and I will be a true father to you. And you will be my beloved sons and daughters, says the Lord Yahweh Almighty. Amen and Amen. And for those of you who don't know what I've just read, it's 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1 to 18 in the Passion Translation. Awesome, awesome translation, guys. 
And, and that's what I want, to, I want to do today. I want to give you an encouraging word. I want to encourage you today because it would see and it would feel that everything has just imploded. Everything hasn't changed. Nothing is, I mean, it looked as if, 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 if everything was, was sort of coming almost to a point of, of normality. And there we go again. We back down to level four. And for those of us who are, who are fervent for the kingdom, those who, of us who love getting together, now all of a sudden they banned us and they said, we're not allowed to get together. And we've respected government. We've respected what, the, what, what government, government has asked of us. And so today, as, you, as those of you and, uh, who are watching this and, and are alone and cannot be in house fellowship, guys, I want to encourage you this morning with this word. The Lord gave me this word, and I think it's such a powerful word. Because if you read, and, and I, I read the Passion Translation, but if you read the, the New King James Version, it is, it's just as powerful. It's just as powerful because the, the word that, 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 that's holding on or tugging on my heartstrings this morning is all things. And I'm going to read, and I think it's in, it's, it's in verse 4. It says, but in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. That for me is a, guys, that's a, that's, that's a hard word. In all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. And we know, you know, Peter says it over and over again. John says it. We know, and I want to say this morning, we know that we are all ministers of God. I mean, Pastor Gerard gave us such an awesome message about the, the, the ministry of reconciliation. That God was in Christ, okay, not imputing judgment. Not imputing judgment. In other words, he was, he was reconciling himself to the world. And therefore, as, as Pastor Gerard said, we have the ministry of reconciliation. But Paul goes even further here. He says, in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. And then he unpacks this so beautifully. He says, in much patience, which means that we are, we are always, we, we are long suffering. It means that we are always um, aware of the fact that anything we do, anything we say, can affect somebody's opinion of the kingdom of God, can affect somebody's opinion of Jesus Christ himself, because we are his ambassadors, as Pastor Gerard said in much patience, in tribulations. In other words, so every single day, each one of us, each situation, guys, in, in other words, when I'm driving in the car, when, when I haven't had my way, when, when, somebody, when somebody says something that really, really offends me or something, um, you, know, you know, I don't get good service at a restaurant. Well, not, not that we can go to restaurants, but you know, I don't get good service at a shop or I don't get good service with a client or whatever it, Paul is saying in all things I commend myself as a minister of God in stripes and I mean we haven't been beaten we haven't been imprisoned we haven't been in riots um, you know how many of us how many of us are actually losing sleep because of the kingdom how many of us are laboring it says in labors in fastings Okay, and then he changes gears here. So he says, in all things, and my question to each one of us, you know, with this lockdown, are we going to go and hold? Are we going to, are we going to gear down? Or are we going, or are we going to really accelerate? And what do I mean by accelerate? It means that each one of us is a minister because he said, in all things, we are ministers. In all things means in every situation, in every interaction, we are ministers of reconciliation. So that, so that in every, every, every form, that any, any exposure to anything, any time of the day, no matter how harrowing, no matter how bad it is, it's going to reflect on whether or not you and I are ministers of the kingdom. And I tell you, that is a scary thought to me because all of a sudden, you know, that scripture that comes up into my heart that says, you know, be slow to anger, 
be slow to speak, be quick to listen, seek to understand. You know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Guard your heart above all things because out of it comes the issues of life. Proverbs 4, verse 22, 23, around there. So, so we've got all of these things saying to us, listen, in all things, we are ministers. And you know, my favorite question that I usually ask um, the guys that are, that are walking a path with me when, you know, when they've had a conflict situation or they've, they've argued with somebody at work or somebody that they don't know, you know, or a, sort of a road rage. And the, 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 what I'll ask them, or, you know, bad service at the bank, not that the bank gives bad service, I'm just saying, I'll give you an example. And then I'll ask them, okay, so did you invite them to church afterwards? Because that's pretty much what it is, isn't it? If, if, if the flavor, if the aroma, I mean, I've had some serious arguments with people this week that I disagree with, that are, that are, that, 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 you know, have given me bad service. And, but I made sure each time and I'm not, listen, I'm not hearing myself. I'm saying we're in this every day, guys, but we ministers in all things. And uh, that's fun because I want to tell you today, you're going to fail every day. You're not going to fail as many times as I am or do, but you're going to fail. And the wonderful thing is you can just instantaneously says, yeah, we then as workers together with him also plead you not to receive the grace of God in vain. So guys, this is a time where we get, um, I got such a wonderful message from somebody today and I want to share it with you, you know. <laughs> and I don't know where he got it from, if, it, you know, if it's somebody that, if something that he read somewhere, I apologize if I'm, if I'm committing plagiarism, you know, I don't know, but I thought it was so wonderful. He said to me, you know, um, he, he sent me this message about, you know, because of this lockdown again, the churches, you know, he, he talks about us being salt. And he said, you know, that when, when, when we go to church, that when we go to a building or whatever, then that church is, you know, that, that salt is in a pot. But now with this lockdown, you know, that salt has to be, has to be, um, has to be shaken out. It has to be spread, it has to be sprinkled onto something. And who knows, and, and, he, and, he, and he explained it so beautifully, he says, you know, when you, when you sprinkle that, that salt on, on whatever, whether it's a salad or whether it's food, for that salt to work, it actually has to disappear. And I, and I think that's such a lovely description of what God is doing now with His church. So, so uh, Mr. Mr. Martin Fent, I want to thank you for sending that message to me. And, uh, you know, so I'm just being obedient because I received that message from you just before I recorded this. So I think it's a word from God. This is a time of salt, guys. This is a time for us to go underground, not to be seen. It's not a time for us to shout and scream and say, hey, we, we want our rights. No, we don't have rights. And the reason why we don't have rights is because our rights died the day that we got born again. The day that we got born again, we were crucified with Christ. And, um, you know, we were, we were buried with him through baptism. You know, amen. That's such awesome, powerful scripture. There's such powerful truths about us. So it's time for us to infiltrate. It's time for us to be salt and to be light. And isn't it just marvelous? Because, you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's going to be such a long time. But because of what, what's happening, we are going to have to infiltrate. We are going to have to, um, you know, go underground as it were not getting together i'm not talking about Ill illegally but each one of you has has still has the right to go to work each one of you still has the right to interact with those people around you and i want to say something to you today that that you don't know and especially in this time you don't know how long that person that you are with has got before he moves on to his next life or to the next stage of life because with COVID around we don't know look the stats are the stats are pretty pretty solid the stats are pretty um, safe in terms of how many get very sick and how many people get pneumonia and how many die but you don't know who the, those two percent or 1.8 percent is that are going to die it could be the person that you've interacted with today that you actually had a fight with or that you are that you are unhappy with their service 
And just think of it. I mean, isn't it an amazing feeling to know that just that, just that one step back, just that, just thinking for two seconds longer, just trying to understand, trying to be a minister in all things can be the difference in somebody's life between an eternal damnation and an eternal paradise. And that really, really moves my heart to think that I have been given the authority and the power and a ministry so that I can affect change through the way I act and the way I speak. And that that's a heaviness, isn't it? I mean, that's a burden. And it's not a heavy burden. It's a burden that I can take every day and take it to my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and say to Him, Lord, I can't carry this. I'm not sure whether or not I said the right words. I'm not even sure if I'm preaching the right gospel or preaching the right things today, but Lord, can I give my burden to You? Because You said, your yoke is easy and your burden is light and that you're lowly, meek and humble and that I can learn from you. And that's what I want to do right now. And so guys, I don't want you, I don't want you when you go underground in, in these next two weeks to draw back. I want you to move forward. You know, Pastor Quibus shared with us the other day that the one thing that kept him alive while he was going through those challenging nights was that song of always moving forward. And so this is a short, encouraging message. And there where you are right now, I want you to contact every single person so that we can, even though we're not in the same house, even though we're not together, that we take covenant meal together. And I want you really, when you take covenant meal, don't take it for yourself. Don't take it for yourself. Take it for, for somebody that's in your house fellowship or somebody that you know that's either suffering from COVID or has lost somebody to COVID or whatever, or whatever, not just COVID. I mean, let's not just make it about that. Let's not single out one disease or one, one bit of suffering, but every person knowing. And, and, and I, want, I want us to get serious this morning. I want you to ask the Lord, and I'm dead serious, guys. In which area in your life are you not being a minister? Is it in your marriage? Is it being a father? Is it being a provider? Are you, are, you, are you a minister of the gospel as at your workplace? Are you a minister of the gospel at any shopping center? Are you kind? Are you courteous? Let's look what he says. He says, by purity, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love. In other words, love without hypocrisy. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Sword and a shield. Sword of the word, the spirit and a shield of faith. That's how we go. That's how we operate. That's how we roll. By being honored and dishonored. Some people are going to honor us. Some people are going to dishonor. Some people are going to give us an evil report. Other people, we don't care. It's a good report. It's an evil report. As deceivers, yet true. As unknown, yet well known. As dying, and behold, we live. As chastened, yet not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, yet possessing all things. So let's ask him this morning. Lord, where am I not being a minister? A true minister of reconciliation in the gospel. Lord, because I am your ambassador. I am your representative. I am your contact point with eternal life to those who do not know you. Listen to that. I am the contact point to eternal life to those who don't know you. That is so serious. That is so amazing. My life has meaning because of that. My life if, no matter how bad it is, no matter how, how uh, uh, troublesome things are, that I am a contact point for eternal life through Jesus Christ. 
And so, Lord, I pray right now to my brothers and sisters, would you come and pick them up, those who need encouraging this morning? Would you, would you show them the things that you've planned for them? Because your word says in 1 Corinthians 2, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart can even know the things that God has planned for those who love him. And so this morning, I know, Lord, that you're picking up a lot of people, that you're showing people that this, that this is not Mama Mia, here we go again, but this is a new season. And we operate differently. We're going underground. We are going beneath the radar. And it's not to, and like I said just now, that's not to do illegal stuff. But that's just, in other words, we are salt. And because of salt, we are being mixed in to things around us. And because of that, we're going to be a contact point for eternal life. Wow. I love that. I love that. So Lord, I thank you right now as I pray for each and every one. Those who are downcast. Those who are lonely. Those who feel that they've missed the boat. Maybe those who have had a false conversion. Maybe those who have had a false gospel preached to them where they believe that you are there for them and not the other way around. So Lord, I pray for them right now. And I thank you that you come and do a miracle. Lord, and as we, as we just, you know, even though we're not together physically, we are together spiritually. So I want to bless you for your family. And King Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we are all your ministers. We are all your loyal subjects. And in this week, miracle after miracle after testimony after testimony of what you are doing in us, to us and through us. And I bless you for each one. Be lifted up high, be exalted and be worshipped. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen and Amen. I bless you. I can't wait to speak to you guys again. I can't wait to see you guys again. And I hope you have an awesome week. And um, guys, get connected. Stay connected. Stay connected. Even if it means a phone call every day. I want you guys to phone each other. I want you guys to do video calling. I want you guys to Zoom. For those of you who, who, who are losing contact in this time, don't, I, I don't want people to grow cold. You know, the Bible talks about in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. And I think that is this time, but not for us, because the gospel is the power of God and to salvation to all who believe. But to those who are perishing, it's foolishness. It's absurd. So we pray for those guys. We pray that they would know that they would know the only true God in Jesus Christ whom he sent. So I bless you guys and I love you all. And guys, guys, I want you to love the brothers. I want you to love the sisters. And in this time where, where there's a need, where there's a need, come alongside. Where there's a, where there's a void, fill. Where there's, where there's emptiness, come and, 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 and fill up that emptiness with whatever it is that is needed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. You are the way maker, Lord. Have your way. There's no one like you, Jesus. Way maker, way 
dream maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here touching. You are here, touching every yard. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every yard. I worship you. Yes, Jesus. I worship you. You are here. You are
Yes, Lord, I worship. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, meeting every need. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. You are here touching. You are here, touching every life. I worship. I worship you. Yes, Lord, I worship. I worship you. You are here. You are here, meeting every need. I worship you. I worship you. Sing Waymaker, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. See one more time, way maker. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, oh, oh. yes, Lord, even if I cannot see, I know you're there. Lord, I know you're there. Cause we walk by faith and not by sight Just sing with We walk by faith and not by sight We walk by faith and not by sight Oh Lord See we walk Cause we walk by faith and not by sight We walk by faith and not by sight We walk by faith and not by sight Yes Lord Cause we walk by faith and not by sight We walk by faith and not by sight We walk by faith and not by sight Thank you Jesus, let's just proclaim that this morning Oh we walk by faith and not by sight We walk by faith and not by sight We walk by faith and not by sight Waymaker, Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, Jesus. Won't you come a little closer? Won't you draw a little near? We long for you We long for you Won't you come a little closer Won't you draw a little near We long for you We long you come a little closer won't you draw a little near we long for you we long for you won't you come a little closer won't you draw We love. 
Won't you come a little closer? Won't you draw a little nearer? We long for you. We long for you. Say it one more time. Won't you come a little closer? Won't you draw a little nearer? We long for you. We long for you. Won't you come a little closer? Won't you draw?
Don't you draw me 